Happy Juneteenth, friends. I have just woken up. I slept in this morning and I need to walk my dog. I need to drink my coffee. I need to do all the great things. And then I'm going to read great books today. And I haven't done a reading vlog in a very long time. So I decided to do one today and because it's Juneteenth, which is the celebration that the last enslaved people in the United States in the state of Texas were freed um, several years after the Emancipation Proclamation and two months after the end of the Civil War. It is a day for black joy and black liberation. I could read black nonfiction about like the story of black people in America, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to read black joy stories. So stories written by black authors that feature happy, like happy stories. And I'm sure every book has happy moments and sad moments. So it doesn't just have to be completely happy, but that's like my focus for today. I have read several great, amazing books by black authors this month and this year, but this today is a day for celebrating. So we're going to celebrate Juneteenth and read happy books by black authors today. And I am so excited. I haven't done a reading vlog in so long. And I think today is a good day to do it because it's a three day weekend. I can read all day today and worry about cleaning my house tomorrow when I also have off on work Saturday. So here we go. Um, let's get started. It's a vlog. So I'm just going to show you like my day, what I'm doing, and hopefully we'll have a great time. I'm excited. Um, yeah, let's get going. <laughs> just finished Get a Life Chloe Brown and I really liked the representation of a black woman with fibromyalgia and like she wasn't a thin character like she talked about her body weight and how she felt about taking up space in the world and I mean that in a good way like she talked about like how people could make her feel ugly but she was really beautiful and how she lived with chronic pain and how people need to be friends with those with chronic pain and like listening to each other and like just not ignoring them because they don't keep up with as abled people do like as an abled person you just like hustle and bustle through life and you don't really stop for your friends who maybe have chronic issues that they can't be as hustly and bustly as like an abled person oh yeah i like that part of the book it, that was cool i hated i hated red and her I didn't like the romance at all. It never really vibed with me. Number one, I felt like Chloe and Red both needed to go to therapy and that just annoyed me. They needed to go to therapy instead of taking out their issues on each other and like the constant misunderstandings and the way Red was always like expecting her to dis to judge him. I just didn't like that. Also, he was a redhead and he went by redhead. I hated that. Like as a redhead, I I was not a fan of that. Like if you're going to write a book with me as a redhead, do not refer to me as Ginger or Red. Like that's just I guess his name was Redmond or whatever, but I felt it was I mean, some redheads don't mind being called Red, but like my name is Elizabeth or my name is you know, whatever as a redhead and I don't just want to have a generic nickname because of my hair. As me, as a person. He just annoyed me. He was so always, he always like first assumed the worst because he needed to go to therapy and he really shouldn't be in a relationship with Chloe till they both go through therapy and get over their like own problems because both of them had emotional issues because of awful people who treated them awfully and I just wanted them to go to therapy. <laughs> instead of falling in love. Like falling in love is great, but also go to therapy so you don't like need each other to fix each other's issues because that's not how you should view your romantic partner as someone to fix your emotional pain that you've experienced. Like your romantic partner is there with you in life to go through life with you, but if you've had trauma, you still need to go to therapy and figure out how to do life on your own and not like Chloe still shut down so much and still closed off to people until Red as her love interest comes in and is like, Chloe, don't close down. Like, Chloe, be open to people. And that should not be a romantic partner's job. Like, does that make sense? I, I just didn't enjoy it. 
it was very bleh, to me. <laughs> like I thought the representation was awesome, but I didn't like the romance at all. And the plot hinged on miscommunication and like judging somebody without thinking through what you're judging them for first. And I didn't like that. So I also thought it was like 10 hours long and I thought it could be like seven. I thought it could have been about seven hours. So like three or four hours shorter than it was. It just felt like really drawn out and like it didn't really need to be that bad. I am going to read the proposal now. I could read Cinderella is Dead. Actually, maybe I'll read Cinderella is Dead, but it's on my Kindle and my phone needs to charge. So I just put my phone on to charge. So I think I'm going to read this because I don't have to have my phone out. And that's so I'm going to read this book. And this book is actually part two in The Wedding Date. So I've never read The Wedding Date, um, but it's yellow, I believe. And it looks super, super cute. And I just... Somebody recommended this and I got this and then I realized I never read The Wedding Date. I don't think I have to read The Wedding Date before I read this. I will pick up The Wedding Date, especially since they're both paperbacks. And honestly, these both both of these books would look, would look amazing on my shelf. Like, I'm looking forward to getting The Wedding Date because like yellow, blue, perfect summer vibes. Anyway, going to read this now. First, I'm gonna update my Goodreads and then I'm gonna start reading this book. Super excited. It sounds super cute and maybe less annoying than Chloe and Red, who annoyed me to no end because I needed to go to therapy. Here we go. Let's go. I am 96 pages into this book and I'm already liking it more than the Chloe Brown book. Mainly because the love interest is a lot more interesting to me. His sister is super funny. I like his cousin and it's just already I'm much more engaged with this story. I also like Nick a lot. She's very funny to me and her friends, the one that owns a cupcake shop and just is super funny and I just feel like the story is like fresh and vibrant in a way that Chloe Brown's love interest could, was not. Which is hard for me to say because he was a redhead. So I wish he had been more interesting of a character. But pining and whining and doing art was just not not making it for me. But this book, I I it's very fun so far. I really like it. Maybe it's the LA vibes. Maybe it's the LA vibes. I did listen to uh, Chloe Brown's book and it was read by this really proper English accent that just grated on me a tiny bit so maybe that was it I don't know it just wasn't for me and this book is already super cute and I'm 100 pages in I'm gonna keep reading because I'm enjoying it so far and it was adorable I I loved it it was so much better to me than the Chloe Brown book just like the pacing was better the characters I loved Carlos and Nick I thought they were super cute I liked their chemistry more it felt more like um, emotional and like conversational than the like raw physical chemistry of the Chloe Brown and red dude book um, so I just liked it a lot better and like a thousand percent recommend it was super cute and I honestly Carlos he was a babe and Nick was just absolutely hilarious I thought she was super funny and her friendships with her two friends was really great like I really liked the themes of friendship in this book more than the Car Chloe Brown book I just thought it was better done it was more interesting like I wanted to keep reading I'm still not wanting to move to LA but like I get why it's a vibe anyway so update it is now like 5.30 and I read two books so far. So I'm trying to read one more book and then I'll be, um, got my goal done for reading three books today. So we'll see if I read the third book. So gotta finish walking my dog, enjoying the sunshine and then we'll see. What I am back 
back inside. Oh, I just threw my ponytail. Anyway, I'm back inside from my walk. I downloaded Scribd, which I have never used before, and apparently it costs nine dollars a month, but you can do a first month for free, and we're all about free trials in this redhead's household. Um, anyway, so I downloaded Scribd, and I got Felix Ever After. I really want to read Felix Ever After. It sounds super good. A lot of my friends are recommending it, so a lot of peer pressure, but I also really, really, really want to read Cinderella is Dead, because that cover and I've heard it has LGBT rep in it and both of the books I read today were hetero romances the straight romances I don't even know what to say and like the proposal was very cute and it did she one of her best friends in the book was queer and that was really great but both stories were a straight romance which is fine it's nothing wrong against that but like I'm ready but I need something that's like not straight after all it is june and pride month and my hair is a mess like can my bangs not stick together please anyway so i could read felix's felix ever after it's also not a straight book or cinderella is dead both of those books have lgbtq representation which is awesome i just have to pick one i hate picking one and the, honestly right now i have to work starting around 7 30 to about 10 o'clock tonight to make sure that the 11 p.m. news is working fantastic. I didn't have to do my five o'clock, so I'd have to work an eight hour day today, but I do have to work like three, two hours. And so I can't really read a book, like sit, sitting there and reading a book. I can't do that. And Cinderella is Dead is on my Kindle. So I can't like just hold my Kindle and read while I work, but I can listen to an audiobook. So I could do Felix Ever After. It's eight hours long. And the deal is if I was to read Cinderella is Dead, I could read it in much shorter time than eight hours because I can read really, really fast. I read the proposal in two and a half hours. Like I am a fast reader. I pick Cinderella is Dead. Even if I don't read it while I'm working, as soon as I get off work, I can finish it before midnight. Whereas with Felix Ever After, I can listen to it at work, but I will not finish it before midnight because it is eight hours long and I cannot read it faster than I listen to the audiobook because if I put it on like 2.25 speed, then I won't be able to understand what's going on. So decisions, decisions. And honestly, I just really want to read Felix Ever After, but I also really, really want to read Cinderella is Dead. I, maybe I'll do both. <laughs> anyway, no, I can't do both. Um, I don't know. And I'm talking to you, but you can't give me advice right now. This is very bad. I'm not being decisive right now and I do not like not being decisive. You know, if I start reading right now, um, then I will have to read and not go do anything. But if I start Felix Ever After, I could fix dinner and do other things. So I think I'm going to start Felix Ever After because I do need to do other things that I need, like with my hands, like I need to go fix food and get ready for work. So I think I'm going to do that. The decision has has been made. I have to go work, so I have to listen. To, like, I want to listen to Felix Ever After, even though I also want to read Cinderella is Dead. But, you know, after I get off work, maybe I'll just finish Cinderella is Dead. I'll start it and read it in one night. Who knows? It might be that good. And it's Friday night! I could stay up really, really late, and it is hurting no one. No one is hurt if I stay up all night and read. No one at all. So, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and go do something else and start reading Felix Ever After. Super excited to start this book. It sounds incredibly good. And everybody I know who's read it has loved it. This is what happens when you put the music on 1.5 speed. Felix Ever After, it sounds the just finished Felix Ever After and wow I'm so tired it is after midnight I listened to this book while I worked and it was eight hours and I didn't really listen to it that fast because I was actually really enjoying the pace I listened to it at 1.5 speed so normally I listen to books at 1.75 or 2.0 speed so why my point oh zeros I don't care um Anyway, I didn't listen to it that fast, in my opinion, and I thought like this pacing was super good. <laughs> anyway, this book was so good. Uh, it was so good, y'all. And it's also, what time is it? 
it's 12.35 and I literally just sat on the couch after I got off work at 10 and sat here for two and a half hours and listened to this book. It was just that good and normally with audiobooks like I have to go do something. Well I did something. I scrolled Twitter. That's all I did for two hours. That is not me but this book was so good and it's also like set in Pride in New York so like it's June in New York and there's mentions of Stonewall and the Pride Parade and like teen they're teenagers of course and they go down to Coney Island one day and like I've never lived in New York. I haven't ever gotten to really experience Pride in a city because I grew up in a country in a country of course I grew up in a country. I grew up in the country on a 10 acre farm with cows like that was pride except I was told gay people were fake so like um yeah so <laughs> I've never really experienced pride in a city I did go to pride Orlando last fall that was the very first pride I ever went to but pride Orlando would be like very different from like pride in Philly or LA or New York or Atlanta someday I want to go to like a big pride but I've never gone before and like reading about it in the book really was really cool and then that sounds so superficial though. Why am I talking about the book's conversation about like pride when I could be talking about Felix and Ezra? Oh, this book was so good. <laughs> it was so good. Um, yeah. You don't read books with like teenagers who've never really experienced love and feeling like nobody loves them and they don't deserve love. Like I've not read a book that really delves into that before and this book really delved into that and it was because of their identity as a trans person and a dimmy boy and like being black and like feeling like they weren't accepted by their own family and you know it was so good it was so good um I also really liked I think I've said I loved that it was set in June I love that it was they, they were in summer art school I loved like everything about this book it was so good I was planning on reading Cinderella is dead but I'm really 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 happy I read this book and I highly encourage you to read it it's so good so that's the end of it's so good so I guess that's the end of my reading vlog oh there's my tripod you can see I wasn't even using it to talk about the book because I'm like 1230 at night lazy um, there's, there's no aesthetic happening here. It's just me in front of the camera when I want to be sleeping. Okay, I'm not going to fall asleep in front of you. Not going to happen. But yeah, um, that was my Juneteenth reading, reading Black Voices and Black Happy Stories. They were also good. Well, Chloe Brown was not good, but... The Proposal and Felix Ever After, perfect reads, <laughs> so good. And I guess, I hope you guys had fun. That was just a vlog, I haven't done one in forever. And that was literally a single day vlog, wow, that, what is this lighting? Anyway, that was a single day vlog. I don't think I've ever done a vlog in just one day. And actually, like, I'm planning on editing and posting it soon. So we'll see if that happens. It could be September before I put this based on my track record of saying that in vlogs. I still have my Twilight vlog from last fall, saw, bleh, from last July when I read Twilight for the first time and I still have the video footage and I've never posted it. I probably won't because I didn't like Twilight and it has racism in it so I'm not really interested in editing that. I just don't have the interest in that very much right now. Anyway, Good luck for, to future me to edit this, and hopefully it will be out on a reasonable time schedule. But if it's, this whole thing is a mess. I want to delete it all, but then I'm like, what is the lighting? Why did it switch? My house lighting stays the same, and then it switches with the lighting. I want to delete all of this because it's such a hot mess, but this is me at 12 30 at night this is why i go to bed at 9 30 and i like whenever i send a snapchat like this people are like are you drunk and i'm like no i'm tired good night anyway i will see you guys later see ya
have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service.